I learned in school that the sun, though it revolved, though it revolved in the solar system, in the galaxy, it did not rotate about its own axis. Is that what is mentioned in the Quran? No, no, that is what I learned in school. We are in 1982. 1982? 27 years back, I had learned that the sun was stationary. But Quran says in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 33, Huwa allazi khalaka layl wa nahara. It is Allah who has created the night and the day. Wa shams wa kamar, the sun and the moon. Tullun fi falaki yas bahoon. Each one traveling in orbit with its own motion. That is because yes, bahoon means it's, it describes the motion of a moving body. So Quran says the sun and the moon, besides revolving, it even rotates about its own axis. And today science has come to know that the sun takes approximately 25 days to complete one rotation. Who could have mentioned this in the Quran 14 years back, which we came to know recently, hardly 20 years back, 30 years back? Here you pause. Don't wait for the answer. You can continue. Quran speaks about that the sky, Almighty God, has made a protected ceiling. Without it, life cannot exist on the face of the earth. In Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 32, Quran speaks about water cycle in several places in the Quran. In Surah az zumur chapter 39, verse number 21. In Surah Rum, chapter number 30, verse 24. In Surah Hijar, chapter 15, verse 22. In Surah Mu'minun, chapter 23, verse number 18. In Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 40. In Surah Araf, chapter number 7, verse 57. Several places, the Quran speaks about the water cycle in great detail. Who could have mentioned this 14 years back? He'll give a pause. Don't argue. Keep on continuing. Quran speaks about biology. That we have created every living thing from water. Quran speaks about botany. That we have created every plant in pairs, two and two, in sexes, male or female. In Surah Taha, chapter number 20, verse number 53. Quran speaks about that the animals have been created from water. Surah Nur, chapter 24, verse number 54. Quran speaks about that the human beings have been created from water. Surah Furqan, chapter 25, verse number 45. The Quran speaks about genetics that it is the male fluid which is responsible for determining the sex of the child. In Surah Najam, chapter number 54. In Surah Najam, chapter 53, verse number 48-49. And Surah Qiyamah, chapter number 75, verse number 37-39. The Quran speaks about embryology. The Quran speaks about geology. The Quran speaks about oceanology. You can give a talk for us together. After every scientific sign mentioned in the Quran, ask your friend, who could have mentioned this in the Quran 14 years back? The only reply I can give you is the creator, the manufacturer, the maker, the inventor, this creator, this manufacturer, this inventor. We Muslims call him Allah, we call him God. So today, science is not eliminating God, it is eliminating models of God. La ilaha illallah. That's the reason a famous philosopher by the name of Francis Bacon said, little knowledge of science makes you an atheist. But in-depth knowledge of science brings you closer to Almighty God. So you can ask your friend to see my video cassette, Is the Quran God's Word? And Quran Modern Science, in which there are various other proofs talking about the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hope that answers the question. We would request non-Muslim brothers and sisters, if you are curious why this book, Al-Quran, it should be read compared to so many other readings you may have which may be more engrossing more interesting more thrilling for you feel free this is your opportunity to ask we have dr zakir naik on this side and this is your session i'm here to help you clarify and help you get a proper answer inshallah uh, maybe you have the next question from the sister's side assalamu alaikum brother uh, any non muslim uh, sister this question is on behalf of a non-Muslim friend named Achha. Dipti. Okay. Uh, she is working oh. in a call center. Okay. Oh, excuse me. If any non-Muslim uh, brother or sister is here who has some reservations on coming in front on the mic, uh, we would allow them to put a question through your friend. Or if you, there are question slips available in the aisles with our volunteers, feel free to write your questions. I would request the volunteers to kindly have slips presented and shown in your hand so they can get the slips from you. Put your question on the slip, have it sent down to me on the stage and inshallah the more interesting one from them, we would put it forward to Dr. Zakir. But it's more preferable you ask on the mic 
so that it's not that I am playing around with the slip or juggling with them and putting the more easy question in front. Yes, sister. Uh, the whole question is, is it compulsory for me to accept Islam to read the Quran? Can I read the Quran without accepting Islam? This is a good question. That is it compulsory for me to accept Islam to read the Quran, or can I read the Quran without accepting Islam? As I mentioned in my talk, that the Quran was revealed as a guidance to the whole of humanity. It's not necessary that you have to be a Muslim to read the Quran. But inshallah, if you read the Quran with an open mind, an unbiased mind, and an open heart, inshallah, inshallah, after reading the Quran, inshallah, she'll accept Islam. That's the reason Yusuf Islam, in an interview, he said that it is good that I read the Quran before meeting the Muslims. He read the Quran and accept, he accepted Islam. If you have met the Muslim before in the Quran, maybe you wouldn't have accepted Islam. Because the Quran is the best example. It is the guidance for the whole of humanity. And you can very well read the translation of the Quran in the language she understands the best. And if she has any query, she is most welcome to ask on the email or to our foundation at www.irf.net. Hope that answers the question. Uh, may I clarify for those who didn't know, Brother Yusuf Islam is the same person, Catch Stevens, the very famous, one of the leading pop singers, British pop singers. Yes, brother, anyone here? Any Muslim, any brother there on the second mic? Any sister has any question on behalf of any non-Muslim? If there are no questions on the slips? or on any of the mics this is a question from a student Aparna she's in the audience today and she would like to know why is Friday given more importance this is the question that why is Friday given more importance and the Lord Prophet said it is like a weekly Eid like a weekly Eid like how the Christians, they have Sunday, the Jews had Saturday. So for the Muslims to be different, that's the reason the Prophet chose Friday. And there are various hadith which mentions the benefit even of Friday. The Sai hadith mentioning that the Noah's Ark came and it got the land when there was a flood on a Friday. And various benefits, but in the Islamic context, it is the weekly important day in which we have the congregation of Salah and the congregation of Salah it is more important normally we pray five times a day but once a week we, we offer the Juma Salah which is a bigger gathering it's like a weekly Eid and it's compulsory that we should pray in that gathering so that and in that Juma Salah like we had today in the afternoon the Imam gives a Qadwa he gives a speech and gives guidance to the weekly guidance to the Muslims, what is what is the requirement? He may talk about the local affairs, he may talk about things which are important and convey the message. So Friday basically is a weekly Eid or a weekly main day of the Muslims. Hope that's the question. Thank you. Yes, brother. 